It is quite possible to program with IoT Builder in C++ and even start with a flowchart and then switch to C++ during development. In this example, we are using a little proximity sensor and reporting distance back to the control unit. We've added a display and an LED strip to the front panel along with a button to turn monitoring on and off. On the hardware side, we've added the Grove IR proximity sensor and a Grove LED to indicate whether we are monitoring or not. Our program is in development and we've just linked the LED to the button on the front panel so that we turn it on and off as we enable or disable monitoring. We now need to query the proximity sensor and report back to the control unit if an object is detected. Let's switch to source code and see how this would work in C++. At the top of our file, there is a lot of pre-generated code that we need to leave alone. Underneath that, we'll find our flowchart variables and then three functions corresponding to the setup routine, the loop routine and the button handler with the logic that we have already added. What we want to do is read the distance and then update our display if the distance between our sensor and an object changes. We'll start by adding a couple of variables for recorder distance and temp distance. Since our little proximity sensor measures between 10 cm and 80 cm, it makes sense to initialize both of these variables to 80 in the setup routine. In the loop routine we need to start by checking whether we are enabled or not, because almost everything else will only happen if we are. Inside this if statement, the first thing we want to do is read the distance from the proximity sensor. We can do this by drag and drop exactly as we do with the flowchart. If we hold the control button down while we drag, we can choose the drop position, otherwise it will drop at the mouse cursor. Once we have the distance, we need to check if it's different from our previous reading. If it is, we need to assign to our recorded distance variable and then go ahead and update the control unit. Again, we can simply drag and drop the set value method of the display and pass in the recorded distance variable. The same drag and drop will work for the LED strip, but we need to do a little arithmetic to translate the 0 to 100 scale of the LED control into the 10 to 80 scale that is the range of the proximity sensor. Finally, outside of the enabled statement, we need to add a server method to wait for requests. This is much like a delay, except that the server will process traffic during the wait period. It's quite important not to run the loop routine full speed, otherwise you will not be responsive to incoming traffic from the front panel, such as button presses. As always with Proteus, we can simulate our program and test that our code is working properly. We can set breakpoints in our code and single step to find and fix problems. And when everything is working as we intend, we can program the real device and use it with our mobile front panel app.